Uh, here based in Berlin and uh, our team is growing. So if you have any uh, uh, questions uh, about our projects, please come to our Twitter to ask our colleagues. So yeah, that's my introduction. So um, maybe the other panelists can also introduce themselves. Yeah. How about Bree introduce a little bit about yourself? Um, Okay. Yeah, so hey everyone, this is Bree from Darwinia. So uh, Darwinia is actually the bridge hub in the Polkadot ecosystem. And we also developed a cross-chain game called Evolution Land. And it's evolving into a Web3 metaverse as well. So basically you're on your NFT land in the game and then you're going to mine different resources from your land. You also got your very cute puzzles to do the mining job and do the PvP comp as a lot of gameplays and new features coming out recently. So please stay tuned to our Twitter to get more uh, new gameplays in the future. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for joining us. And how about uh, Bruno? Bruno, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you for the invite. I'm uh, Bruno. I'm the founder of Remark. And Remark is a system of NFT 2.0 standards that allow you um, to take NFTs much further than just static media um, and actually open up the door to a lot of different uh, highly advanced use cases. Among them is our um, Skybridge metaverse, which is the only decentralized metaverse um, in that it's that is being built right now uh, which is which is super interesting um it's it's also really interesting that you know these standards allow you to build nfts that own other nfts nfts that can be multiple things at the same time so really pushing the boundaries of what nft technology can do and i would uh, appreciate it if you know as many people as possible could join us in experimenting with these nfts on the singular dot app um you know, a few hundred mints will cost you like $2. So please uh, come join us and, and experiment with us. Welcome. By the way, I like your clap collectibles in the behind. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. How about like a, a Tai Kai? I don't know if I pronounced your name correctly. Yeah, it's, it's Kai Tai. Hi, okay. everyone. Um, that's our meant to be here. Thanks for, thanks for the invite. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of RareLink. Uh, so RareLink is uh, enabling any users to um, to earn profit or to to have some revenue without selling the NFT. So putting in a simple way, uh, our platform is enabling any users to stake the NFT. And thanks to the solution we're providing, it will mint a ownership and a right to use NFT. So that is basically the the leeway for any users and NFT owners to uh, either sell it or to rent the newly minted NFT. Uh, right to use have the right to use uh, NFT could be sold on any platform or it could be landed. Uh, application uh, that we think of is uh, in three different categories. Um, the first one is in music. Uh, so, for example, you're a, a singer wanting to to share a new song. And what he's doing is staking the new song NFT on the platform. Uh, and then you can uh, lend this NFT and the right to use NFT to the other fans, users, etc. The added value of it is we embed offline, off-chain information on chain, uh, meaning we can set parameters so that the NFT could be self-destroyed if one of the parameters is uh, reached. Um, parameters such as location, uh, number of times could be played, or uh, is this person really a fan? Uh, second application is in the metaverse. Um, you can have a parcel of land, can have a villa that would want to, to rent or uh, to give to a third party company that would like, like to, to throw a party, for example. Um, and similarly, with all the parameters you set, then you're going to be uh, allowing this person or this structure to, to use that parcel of land or villa, or villa. And final application would be on uh, the different levels, for example, on um, the level of uh, any user on a exchange um, could be level one to any levels, and it will automatically detect what are the benefits of this person using this central exchange, such as discount on fees or other or any other benefits that this user may have. Um, thank you, thank you for for having me today, and um, I let the floor to the other one. 
Thank you. Um, the last, the last but not the least, Twitter X. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I am the Watcher from、uh, Meta Friends, which is a part of Meta X Studios.、Uh, I am not a CEO or co-founder. I am just a community manager.、Uh, but it is an amazing experience to be here, especially with so many stars of the. NFT and Metaverse Universe.、Uh, just to real quick talk about Meta Friends.、Uh, it's a collection of 10,000 next gen fashion toys for the Metaverse.、Uh, we are actually launching our first batch later this week on、uh, Ethereum blockchain. And the entire collection is made up of eight different races, and each has their own genetic appearance and fashion sense. And once we launch our DAP later in the year,、uh, I can't say too much about that, but then you'll really start to see a lot more utility from MetaFriends and a lot more customization. And the goal of MetaFriends is really just to bring together fashion lovers, brands, and really try to form a global community that is decentralized and gives power to both its holders, its users, and its creators. And again,、uh, I'm just really glad to be here because, as I said, there's a lot of luminaries here today. Welcome. By the way, I'm sorry that my camera somehow didn't work just before the live get gets in there. Sorry about that. And let's get started by、uh, about this discussion. I I was just wondering, like everyone is talking about metaverse, everyone is talking about、uh, NFT. We can see a lot of、uh, Web two users. Uh, jumping in into this field, so I was just wondering, what do you guys think up、uh, is the future for the for metaverse? Shin, would you like to go ahead? So, yeah,、uh, I can start. So yeah, so、uh, the term metaverse started, I think,、uh, by Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. So they were thinking about something like, yeah, you need to wear VR goggles. Then enter the metaverse with their app, and then you can interact with everyone. So I think、uh, the whole discussion、uh, start from there. But our interpretation and our metaverse and our idea is、uh, would be a little bit different from that because I feel like that the metaverse should have something like a tangible, should have something, some connections with the real world, right? So this is the. Uh, our interpretation of the metaverse and the future、uh, of the metaverse should have some real world、uh, assets or have some real world connections. So we design something that、um, that could link to any real world asset, like a Nike real world Nike shoes or a、uh, absolute vodka or a Gucci bag, something like that, and we can turn them into an NFT on Kusama. And、uh, also on the Ethereum and on also on the other blockchains. So we think that this this should be something that、uh, uh, in the future that any real world assets are non fungible. Any real world assets can be traceable, can be like、uh, authenticated, and be can be tracked、uh, from the metaverse. So if you want to know that. In the real,、uh, in the metaverse, that oh, you want to know that how many parking lots there, and how many Nike shoes that they're really in the store. So yeah, so we have this kind of thing that could、um, link the real world to the metaverse, and、uh, we think that metaverse shouldn't be something that out of the uh, uh, out of the real world, out of the city. So should be something that always have some connections. Also,、uh, have some oracles like us to input some real world. Like it's really、uh, raining or it's really snowing, and、uh, yeah. So some real world events can impact the metaverse and also our metaverse connections, like trading and also exchanging and minting、uh, new NFTs or something like something like that could have real impact. On the real world, so yeah. So anyway, we're all living in the real world. We need to meet friends. We need to drive. We need to fly, and we need to eat. We need to explore the real world, right? So, um, um, to summarize, 
So the the future of the metaverse should have a bi-directional impact um, um, on the metaverse and also on the real world. Yeah. I totally agree. We have seen a lot of uh, live events or in real life events happen happened uh, in NFT communities like Doodles and uh, uh, Azuki's. They have hosted a lot of in real life events and to gather the community. And also we have seen a lot of uh, fashion brands like Adidas and uh, uh, um, they have started their metaverse as well. So I think that's definitely a chance having like a real life backing value for different NFTs. And I don't know, like a Brie or anyone else have uh, some other to uh, like other different ad- opinions or something to add. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I would like to. <laughs> okay, Bruno, you'll go first. Uh, sure. Um, okay. So I I would uh, like strongly push back about uh, about um, the claim that the metaverse became a thing with Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. Um, like it, it has been a term since 1992 when Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson came out when he first coined the term. Um, and and metaverse to me, like all of the, the stuff that, that Sheen has uh, explained sounds really, really cool. But to me, that is not the metaverse. The metaverse is a virtual environment in which reasonably unique representations of human beings can interact with each other and own that experience. Um, it has nothing concretely to do with the real world, even though implementations with the real world are really, really cool. But the metaverse is very clearly, if we're following the standard definition, defined as a virtual environment for human-to-human interactions um, in a fantasy-like setting, but where you own that experience. And this is why it's very interesting to me that people are so so generally um, friendly towards modern metaverses as they're coming out today, when in fact they're nothing other than multiplayer games that replaced usernames and passwords with NFTs. Um, that is also not a metaverse. That is a multiplayer game with an alternative login method. In most metaverses today, what you get when you log into them is you have a centralized client with a centralized server database, which has an asset pre-built for that client. And if you have the NFT that the client is looking at, looking for in your balance, then that client will allow you to use that asset in the game. And if that game disappears, your asset and all experiences connected to it disappear. So no metaverse today is decentralized or properly a metaverse, because if those servers go down, everything you've accomplished in that environment will also go down. Um, so that's my main gripe with today's metaverses in terms of how they're presenting themselves. They're all just multiplayer games, and that is what we are seeking to to um, kind of revolutionize. But this this stuff that Shin has mentioned is extremely interesting to me. Um, being able to reflect real world um, status inside of a metaverse is something that is that is not really uh, talked about a lot, but I can see a lot of interesting use cases for. Yeah, I totally agree. I found like a lot of people are expecting like a virtual experience, um, like they have uh, hosting different conference, even academia conferences in like uh, metaverse, even though it's a centralized metaverse. Decentralization is definitely one thing. That's why we are here. That's why we need crypto and blockchain. Yeah, um, Bri, go ahead. Yeah, I totally agree with Bruno that um the, the metaverse described by Facebook is definitely not the future uh, metaverse because it's like, it's very fantastic uh, described by Facebook, but it's still like a fancy palace built by 1,000 engineers. So it's it's built by someone else. It won't belong to um, each and every of us. It's still like a new a theory or a new fancy story to get people pay for uh, fancy new products uh, is not a metaverse belongs to us. Um, so I guess metaverse is going to replace the internet and maybe um, each and every of us um, is going to uh, live there. So I guess what distinguishes the current digital world we have got for now, where we already can work, play and socialize uh, in a digital world would be some like core technologies um, to shape the future metaverse, including like virtual reality, 
augmented reality, uh, blockchain, definitely, and most far-reaching vision for the metaverse, I guess, involves uh, brain-computer interfaces. So that's something I am um, really looking forward in the future metaverse. Yeah, that's definitely like the technology development definitely will sh shape the future. And to what to to X. Okay, I'm actually really glad I waited to answer this question um, because my opening line here is going to be ask five people what is the metaverse and you will get five different answers. Uh, this is still, I don't want to say the metaverse is a concept, but you know, we are still at the very early stages of the metaverse. And to go back to Bree's point, uh, the metaverse right now is not the only technology that is developing so quickly. I mean, right now we have AI, we have VR, we have AR, we have the metaverse, we have 5G. All of these technologies are developing and they're coming together at such a fast rate. And I really think part of this can be tied into all of the global lockdowns that we had because, uh, you know, the lockdowns really made people, uh, made the idea of a virtual world uh, something that was very enticing to people. And, you know, that's when you really saw the idea of the metaverse and NFTs enter mainstream. And you know, it's definitely the metaverse, I think, is the next evolution of the Internet. And I'm going to quote Bruno here, though I'm paraphrasing slightly. Um, you know, it is a virtual place where people through their avatars can be social, chat, get some work done, play. But I just want to go back to the point that we're really only at the beginning of the metaverse age. And... Uh, Every discussion I've done, I brought up the point that in the next 10 or 20 years, I could see something similar to uh, the movie Ready Player One uh, becoming close to our reality. Maybe not to the extent it is in the movie, but, you know, definitely the idea of people having virtual avatars in a virtual world where they can do almost anything. It's definitely we're getting closer and closer. And then if you throw in the fact that people are now working on INFTs, I mean, those are Pokemon and Digimon that we've got sitting on our computers now. So when you ask what's the future of the metaverse, it's a very difficult question to answer just because so much is developing so quickly and there are so many possible ways this could go. Definitely. I totally agree that we are just at the beginning. And the future is undefined. Um, Kai Tai. Yeah, th thank you. Um, so I have a vision for the future of metaverse, and it's a very futuristic vision. Um, so we've seen so far the only interaction between the metaverse and the real world is through the different devices. And one of the company called Neuralink is trying to do a brain computer interface, which re uh, which means that it requires neurosurgery to implant device in the brain. So what I'm seeing in the future is we put in chips or any device in the brain of any of us, then it can automatically switch from the real world to the metaverse. If we're at home, then it will be similar to what we're doing currently with a device and getting into the metaverse. And in the real world on the street or in the offices, we can, for example, activate sort of a virtual reality slash metaverse um, so that we can either have augmented reality information in the real world or transferring di uh, directly to the metaverse. That's, I know that's very futuristic, uh, but that's how I'm seeing it. And we have definitely companies working on that. Wow, that's so like uh, edgy cutting and full of imaginations, I would say. Um, yeah, I thank you so much for the great answers. And uh, as uh, many of you have mentioned, NFT is an important element in Metaverse. That's how people get to know, especially Web2 users, get to know about Metaverse and get into Web3. I was just wondering, what do you uh, think about the future form of NFT? 
currently is just a non-fungible token. Is it art collectibles or in-game assets? What, what other forms do you guys expect? Yeah, very good question. Thanks for the host. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, as the, uh, the panelists discussed, so metaverse is really at the early stage, right? So NFT is only a subset. So one of the subsets of the metaverse. So in the metaverse uh, should be a lot of the other components, cryptocurrencies or uh, the infrastructure and uh, like the digital identity and game, a lot of the other things uh, could comprise a metaverse. So the NFT, of course, is the biggest one that could push the metaverse forward and let people to more understand their own metaverse and uh, get the get metaverse uh, uh, move forward. And uh, the NFT also, we see that it's also evolving, right? So it's only a ERC721 is only something that, um, that got adopted a few years ago. And we see that on the Kusama and uh, also on the Polkadot side. So uh, Remark and also the Polkadot team are also defining their own NFT standards uh, to push things forward. So I would definitely say that the future, the NFT won't be in the Ethereum ecosystem. Uh, the reason being is that they don't have any governance and the, the standards there are really like uh, ironed out. You don't have a lot of flexibility, but uh, on the Pogdot and uh, uh, especially the Kusama ecosystem. So we'll see that a lot of possibilities there for people to design their own NFTs and uh, to bring more uh, possibilities like real world asset, like what we are doing. And also you see that the other projects like Relink and uh, uh, Davinia and also MetaFriends and, uh, uh, and Remark also doing their own unique things on the Kusama and uh, Polkadot ecosystem to bring NFT as something more um, more entertainable. This is something that I find is lacking. Um, is is something that uh, Ethereum don't have, right? So, but uh, definitely on the Kusama ecosystem and the Polkadot ecosystem, we'll see that more projects emerging. Will have will design something more entertainable and something more exciting. Uh, that it's just like how you see the 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 ICO world evolved, right? In 2017, we see that there's the a burst of the projects like issuing their own token, uh, and then wow, buy my token, and then yeah, you will get listed, and then you trade, right? Then IEO, and then IDO. And then, like uh, 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 launch pad things or something like that, then you see that people are coming out more entertainable or more ac easily accessible um, ways of designing this kind of cryptocurrency. Right. So cryptocurrency is just one of the uh, product that designs through the um, blockchain technology. So I would say that NFT would also need to evolve just like ICO evolved uh, until now after five years of this kind of um, uh, evolution, right? So NFT will also go through this evolution. I will see uh, this kind of thing more happening on the Kusama and the Polkadot ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's... Sh yeah, Sheen, sure, is sorry, yeah. Sheen is absolutely correct. It's, this has to evolve. Um, this is why essentially um, all NFT projects in Ethereum are basically the same. Uh, and this is why we at Remark have decided to kill ERC721 and um, everything that it's holding back um, across the entire spectrum. So Remark standards are a drop-in replacement for ERC721 that offer everything that that standard does plus uh, an infinity uh, more. The, the biggest... Um, issue with nfts right now as they are is if you want any kind of custom functionality beyond just you know an image or a movie anything at all 
you have to hire a special team to build you a special front end and build you a special DAP around your smart contracts, which are again, custom. And then your entire project depends entirely on your team still being there to maintain that application. Um, this is not scalable. It's not decentralized. It's not. It's nothing. You know. It's like it's just a DAP with a with a much worse database behind it, which is missing the entire point of the blockchain and and everything and all the shared standards that we have. But when you have something like um, something like self self um, uh, self enclosed uh, NFT 2.0 Legos, which you can put together. And if you standardize those, and then any application, any marketplace, any um, uh, mobile app or desktop app that supports these Legos can automatically support any permutation of these Legos when you put them together, that is the true NFT future. And uh, we have had a lot of difficulty training people to think about NFTs in a different way, because uh, until now, they've all seen NFTs as just something that you publish uh, art with. So it's either a piece of music, it's either a piece of, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an image or something. Um, but if you untrain yourself from that school of thought and think about NFTs as rows of any data that you can cryptographically prove that you own, then things change. And that opens a whole new universe of use cases. So you asked about different NFT use cases in the future that go beyond this just images, right? So you have... You can have an NFT that is an ebook that is at the same time an audio file and a PDF file. And if you load it into Audible, it will automatically play. If you load it into Kindle, you will automatically be able to read it. You can have an NFT that has a render that is an accessory for an avatar because we support nested NFTs that can contain other NFTs, a jacket that fits onto an avatar. But that jacket can have one version that is low polygon and one version that is high polygon. So it is compatible with two different metaverses at the same time. You can have a music sheet that is an NFT that has slots for vocal tracks, drum tracks, um, synth tracks, and whatever. People can mint those tracks, put them into the music uh, NFT sheet, and then on every sale of that comp composition, collaborative composition, the royalties are equally distributed to everybody who contributed to it. You can have a house deed that is an NFT that inside of it contains the PDF of its last construction project, a photo album of the last construction project, records of the previous owner, and everything they did in their previous construction projects without having to, to spam your wallet with endless lists of airdrops and NFTs you didn't ask for. So these NFTs are evolvable, useful, and they can be applied to any data structure that you really want to represent properly in, in this way. And they can automatically be supported by any interface that supports these standards. So that, in my opinion, is the future of NFTs, not the next 50,000 bisons that have red hats. Wow, that was mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, you, you really find the current definition of uh, NFTs and uh, really looking forward to it, to see more types of contents uh, or information stored in NFTs. Uh, Twitchx? Uh, I really cannot disagree with what anyone has said. Um, NFTs, if they're going to continue to thrive, if they're going to uh, remain such a fascination to people, then they really do need to continue to evolve. And the most important thing is they need to offer more utilities to their holders, as Bruno was saying. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier that I really see if the right technologies keep converging, uh, NFTs either becoming virtual avatars for people. Uh, in the full sense of the word avatar, or virtual companions. And uh, real quick, I, I would like to mention uh, ERC-998 here, uh, just because MetaFriends will be running on that. And one of the reasons we're using ERC-998 is because of the utilities that it offers. I mean, you know, the MetaFriends will be uh, fully customizable in terms of uh, so they're going to have a body, an accessory, clothing, and possibly a pet. You can trade, you can swap, you can sell. And, you know, we're trying to make them as plug and play as possible. We want people to be able to use them across multiple platforms. And real quick, I just want to mention um, 
you know, the larger role of NFTs within the crypto world, uh, especially over the last two, three years, we have seen crypto take on a larger and larger prominence globally. Um, you know, who would have imagined, you know, five years ago that you would see most governments today using uh, crypto? And NFTs already play such a crucial role because of blockchain technology and, you know, crypto tokens, which can provide virtual ownership to, as Bruno mentioned, you know, at the moment, it's mostly art, music, pictures. But as we continue to develop these technologies, what is to stop NFTs from coming to represent ownership of goods within the e-commerce industry? Uh, you know, with smart chain, yeah, excuse me, with smart chain technology, you know, we have authenticity, we have a clear way of showing goods. It's very easy to imagine that as the metaverse continues to grow and as NFTs continue to develop, that we could see the capabilities and utilities uh, necessary to transfer uh you know, so much of the e-commerce industry onto NFTs. And then from there, you could go even beyond into the real world ownership of items being shown by NFTs. Um, again, this all depends on the right technologies developing at the right rate, but we're moving in that direction. And I definitely think it's possible. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I saw Kai Tai also raised <laughs> yeah, I, I, I agree with Bruno and what just um, Medafrin said. Um, so, so far, what we have seen and what is popular in the market is how anyone can make money swing trading those PFP or, or having those um, connections between the real world or the metaverse on, for example, uh, the real estate side uh, and community social access. A point that I would like to make is current ownership of NFT is has to be differentiated uh, to the IAP right because a lot of people saying I I am the sole owner of the only copy of that NFT means that I have the IP rights, but that is not correct. Um, so I from in my perspective, the best usage of NFT is having a, being able to authenticate what is the ownership, uh, what is the right to use, and what is the uh, the IP right. So uh, by splitting those three different components of NFT, then you can help um, mass adoption, help and onboard more people on the field and uh, telling them that you can be a developer, you can be a author, or you can be the, uh, the company that produced and have the ownership with it and you can license it without having the fear of losing your IP rights. Um, so that is something I, I'm really bullish on it and that's, the platform we're building and trying to solve. Yeah, yeah. totally agree. Three. Um, people think. are always asking, uh, why do we uh, pay for NFTs? We're buying NFTs for, uh, uh, for a good collection or we're buying NFTs for it shows certain social status. So I would say NFT in the future would be mainly like social paths to entering certain communities like, like recent um, uh, hopping uh, moonbirds. Also, uh, holding certain NFTs while like uh, exchanging certain equities in the metaverse, like say holding uh, metaverse uh, meta friends toys will exchange for future um, comprehensive intellectual um, social experience in their uh, metaverse called Blue Universe. So I guess um, NFT would be like entry tickets. Um, for some um, fantastic metaverse experience in the future. Also, the system of playing to earn will, will bridge the gap between NFTs and the metaverse to clear the way for identity, community, and social experiences, real life identities as well. Um, also, um, virtual real estate is really uh, trending recently as well. So um, players in those game five or metaverse games uh, would hold a land, an empty land to um, mine resources or join uh, DeFi uh, activities. All kinds of gameplays will uh, combine crypto uh, world with the real world uh, really 
um, to come with uh, some creative gameplays as well. Finally, um, holding certain NFTs will definitely show someone's support and dedication uh, for a project or certain communi communities is kind of um, a dedication uh, or is kind of like um, a certification of their uh, past dedication to the community and convey various perspectives of governance as well. Totally agree. I think NFT definitely redefines the relationship between uh, creators and audiences and also the ownership of different uh, uh, creations. Yeah, thank you all for the inputs. And um, I was uh, just wondering, because each of you are either founder or uh, core members of different uh, individual uh, projects. So I, I was just wondering from your point of view, how would uh, individual projects going to change the metaverse in the future? Or what's their importance or role in this uh, path? Yeah, thanks for the question. So I think um, from the previous discussion, we all come up with the, uh, we'll realize that the NFT is not something that's uh, out of thin air, right? So, but by the definition of the NFT, like Bruno mentioned, there's the virtual place to have virtual experiences. But, uh, but we'll realize that it's not the end of the, the metaverse. It's also not the end of the NFT because the NFT and the metaverse is something that, also, uh, something that uh, always need to evolve. We need evolution, just like the cryptocurrency. And uh, in in terms of this kind of thing, we all see that uh, the NFT should come with utility, right? So you need to have an uh, audiobook to listen, and you need to have a real vodka or Nike shoes to wear, right? So this is something that we all see a lot of the other projects like us. And also some other projects like you recently heard that, so you can get an NFT to 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 run to to do jogging, and then you can earn some tokens. This kind of uh, utility, right? So you get an NFT shoes and you run, and then you you earn something. So I see that this also I see this is a part of the evolution of the NFT from the uh, QRs. Uh, collectibles to something that you can re really uh, use it or to have some utilities uh, to link with the real world to some actions and then you can earn something or you can make some impact to the real world right so this is also something we are also working on to work uh, to design something with Kusama um, on our own uh, Kusama based uh, parachain and uh, uh, to design something that people can uh, put a tag on the real world asset and to link with the real world and, uh, and, uh, and the asset and then make some impact, right? Because we all realize that it's not purely JPEG or uh, purely an, an audio that uh, you can collect will make the impact or make people find entertainable to make people feel like that. They want to work with, they want to wear it. They want to buy it. They want to equip, uh, equip this kind of thing, and uh, to feel like that. Oh, I have this kind of thing, right? So we see that in the future. So the, the projects like uh, like uh, like uh, four uh, like five of us here. So we're all working on different directions to make people uh, feel that they really own this kind of thing. They really can use this kind of thing. They can really like uh, feel entertained. So I, I would say that the key is to feel them, to let them to feel they're entertained. They're, um, they're part of this kind of thing. It's not only holding such a picture would make them feel like that, right? So we all, uh, so all, all of the panelists here, uh, so I think we, we are all working on something that's very unique and uh, uh, can really impact the real world and can really let people to feel they're entertained. So I think that would be the key of the projects that uh, bring the uh, more use cases or bring more like people to own this NFT. Yeah, definitely engagement is always the key. Uh, Bruno, I saw you raised up your hand. 
Um, yeah, so we are more of the uh, like um, ownership of experience purists, where we want to uh, keep your experiences with you once the metaverse or the game dies in in any way. Um, so if regulators come knocking, uh, if if your servers get stolen, whatever else happens, um, the metaverse primarily should should survive. So it should be um, an eternal experience. And secondly, if if somehow it doesn't, or you decide to leave it, you keep your experience from it. And this is possible only with advanced standards, where um, the NFT itself, when it is multi-resource, it contains all the assets it needs. So if, for example, you have an avatar, that avatar can have one resource, one output that is just a simple, uh, nice image for marketplaces and such. But that same NFT contains the 3D model that you need to use in that sp specific game. Uh, when it's loaded into the game, it is not only used as a login alternative, but also any metaverse that really cares about decentralization will follow these standards because a piece of virtual land, like it will be the case in, in our metaverse, a piece of virtual land is an NFT. And in order for you to put your avatar into that piece of land, you literally put your avatar into that piece of land. The land contains that NFT. This has several benefits. One is that you actually introduce real digital scarcity as advertised but, but by all of these NFT projects, but not fulfilled. Um, because if your avatar is in one place in a metaverse, it cannot be in another. And that is the second problem with current metaverses. You can log into as many copies of different metaverses as you wish with the same NFT and play at the same time and even sell that NFT while you're logged in. Nothing will happen. This is because they all use NFTs as just your login mechanism. Uh, by doing this, um, the, the right way where you actually send an NFT into another NFT and that NFT is then responsible for the ownership structure of that NFT. And by making this very easy to use for everybody in a, in a, in a simple to use SDK and framework, uh, you end up with decentralized metaverses that have all of the assets they need in the NFTs themselves. Now, further, uh, in terms of owning your experience, you need to be able to add achievements, skills, um, resources, items, everything to those NFTs. And you cannot do this in typical environments that have NFTs today because all you get is pointless NFT drops alongside your main NFT. But with a good enough standard, you can actually put other NFTs into that other NFT so that if I earn something in game, my actual avatar contains this. And when I log out of the game, my avatar still has this. And in the future, if a metaverse appears that will uh, recognize this avatar, and it will by default if it uses these standards because they're all compatible, then it will automatically know what my avatar has and be able to use that in the next game. My avatar keeps their experience with them. Additionally, every skill, personality, crafting recipe, everything your character does is represented as an NFT, a non-transferable NFT in the NFT itself. So the avatar has an NFT brain into which you can install other NFTs like skills, personalities, and other, other things that your avatar needs to evolve with the ecosystem. And the last piece of the puzzle is a truly global economy. Because this is all based on a standard that makes these multi-resource nested NFTs possible, any collection respecting these standards automatically makes these uh, mutually compatible, which means that your items have cross-collection compatibility, and therefore the concept of rarity no longer applies. Whereas before you had like a collection of 10,000 fish, and then some of them have a red coat. And so you have three red coats, and then your red coat has a rarity of three, because there are three red coats, coats in a collection of 10,000 red fish. With um, a, an advanced enough standard, what you get is a uh, Coat that is equipable and unequipable, not just among the fish, but among any other collection that comes out using those standards. And so if I publish a collection of 50,000 penguins that also can wear the red coat, suddenly that, rare, that red coat has a rarity of three in 60,000. 
and not three in 10,000. And additionally, your items from one metaverse become compatible with items in the other. So you take your experience with you. You take everything you've accomplished with you. And this is what I mean by ownership of experience and a decentralized metaverse, which is only possible if we break away completely from ERC-721, 998, and 1155. Well, you always update my like knowledge. Um, yeah, Twitch X. Twitch X. Okay, I'm gonna keep this pretty short because uh, Bruno hit almost everything there. Um, so I'm just gonna focus on the part of the question that was bringing the effects into the real world. Uh, so as Bruno mentioned, we are. Uh, creating NFTs now that have the capability to own other NFTs. So this opens up a plethora of opportunity if this can be applied to the real world. So for example, I think it was back in 2020, uh, the first web XR awards were given to recipients in the form of NFTs. And almost anybody could probably go in and create a file that looks like the XR award. Uh, but the real winners and owners are the ones who can prove through their NFTs that they're the true recipients. Now, if we can apply this in uh, our, you know, into the real world as we move forward, this would be absolutely amazing. So, for example, uh, we already have online universities and colleges. So what happens in the future if diplomas are tied to NFTs or if physical real estate becomes tied to an NFT contract? You know, these are all applications that are absolutely possible in the next, you know, 10, 20 years, as long as people keep moving towards them. And, you know, ultimately, this does come down to what people want. And so far, it seems that you know, people want a virtual world with a lot of utility and some level of connection to, you know, their real life world. And so I think that's one reason why there are so many directions that the metaverse is going in right now, uh, because we're trying to meet the needs and the wants of people. And, you know, we just need to keep developing the technologies as rapidly as we can. And I think everything that we have discussed here today is absolutely possible. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if uh, there's no other like comments, we can move to next question. So uh, I was just wondering what is the NFT utilities, if, if there is any differences of dif NFT utilities in different chains, like but like Shin has touched upon about this, like in, uh, for example, in Polkadot and in uh, Ethereum or other like uh, EVM uh, compatible chains or Solana. Yep. So th definitely uh, the interoperability, I would see that is uh, would be a important part of the evolution uh, path for the NFT, right? As you guys see that, so the token uh, cryptocurrency interoperability is also something that a lot of uh, exchanges and uh, a lot of uh, projects are also working on, right? So for example, how do you, how do you convert a ERC-20 USDT to the, to, to the ERC, uh, TRC-20? Uh, Teaser. So you just simply deposit to the to the exchange, and then you can just get the, another chain's cryptocurrency teaser out, right? So we see that cryptocurrency uh, application for the interoperability is a big part of the day-to-day um, -day, uh, on-chain activity every day that you see on blockchain, right? So also on the Uniswap. Um, that is uh, that is a big part of the Ethereum uh, gas spender that we see every day, right? So, but we see that the uh, NFT is uh, is also in a very early stage. Uh, like what uh, what we all think about so the ERC forty one and uh, all the 
uh, Ethereum standards that were very flexible and will be will be like uh, replaced or will be um, will be um, uh, evolved by uh, the Kusama standards uh, on chain and uh, and uh, in the future there will be more evolving projects uh, to improve the NFT standards on Kusama, but the, the, the design of the Kusama and the Polkadot is to enable the inter interoperability, right? So we see that the, by nature, if we design this kind of NFTs and uh, uh, to, to issue them, to mint them, to equip them on the uh, Kusama blockchain, so it would be something that were in nature in the future that inter interoperability would be something that were very convenient uh, in our ecosystem. And by the way, and our, um, our project is, uh, is currently doing quite long and on the Kusama blockchain. So it's called Tanganyika, it's the largest lake in, in Africa. So yeah, we will see that uh, so the Kusama will offer such a, a big convenience for the projects uh, like uh, Davinia or Relink and, uh, and us uh, a very big uh, convenience to, um, to bring our, uh, our NFT to the other blockchain and uh, also Ethereum or the other future blockchains to enable the transfer much more easier and also a lower cost and also much more flexibility thanks to the multi-chain design. Yeah, I think Kusama or Polkadot is definitely the most uh, like uh, welcoming ecosystem for most projects. It, it allows transferability for different uh, assets, including NFTs. So um, I was just wondering, like, what do you guys think is the most important and on, still under development uh, in infrastructure for NFTs? Yeah, Bruno. Um, well, there's a lot of different stuff. Um, of course, I, I, I would. It would be weird if I if it'd be weird if I didn't say the the Rust version of Remark and the EVM version of Remark because that will enable us to be present on every parachain and and generally EVM chain in the entire blockchain ecosystem. But I think a big, uh, a hu huge dose of credit. Um, should go to Fala and their FAT contract technology, which allows you to actually run um, a decentralized backend for your metaverse game project, for example. And this is what we intend to use as well, so that you can actually have a sort of fog computing model of your backend for the for the actual application, meaning um, no servers needed either. So you can have servers for um, augmenting the experience to make things better like progressive decentralization and stuff but at its core if all of those um, experience upgrading uh, layers fail the core of it is hosted on something like their fat contract and that enables people to keep playing even if the powers that be decide that you're not allowed to play even if servers go down um, and, and so on. So I think uh, decentralized backend infrastructure is something that a lot of people take for granted. Um, there's a reason why all of the metaverses today are on AWS. Um, it's easy. Uh, you can spin up uh, a simple clone of any game uh, engine in you know like a few hours and it'll run. And all you need to do then is uh, implement just a login gate for NFTs and you have a, yourself a metaverse. But nobody's really taking care of the decentralized backend for things. And I think Fala deserves a lot of credit there and should be looked at more carefully by a lot of different projects. Yeah, I totally agree. I I have the same feeling. A lot of a uh, lot of NFT or metaverse projects are actually centralized. Most of their data are stored in AWS. That kind of uh, centralized server. Um, and there's a still a long, long way to go technology wise for decentralization and back back end infrastructure is definitely needed. Um, yeah, Kai Tai. Yeah, th thanks, Bruno. I I definitely agree with, with him. Uh, I will add two different things. Uh, one is the um, the cost of tokenization, and second is the user experience. So um, we know that 
depending on the chain on which the project is developed, we have different and various type of gas fee that is needed to either connect your wallet to the game or uh, trans- uh, doing any other transactions. So uh, what has to be developed is really the, the basis, the fundamentals of any of those blockchain on which those either application or gaming um, rely on. And second point is about the uh, user experience because so far uh, it could be trading, it could be gaming, but uh, I'll take the example of gaming. Um, users uh, are expecting a similar uh, experience than the AAA games, but currently nowadays in the market, all the games have significant delays. So uh, outside of the, the high gas fee, if the user cannot play and have the similar experience, then it is very difficult to have traction and retain those users on the on the um, web free uh, platforms. So what I'm saying is uh, on the tech side is really the fundamentals that have to be improved. And on the storage side, I agree, uh, how can we access the speed, the, the storage of all those data and do not rely on web two uh, infrastructure. Definitely. I have similar experience playing like on-chain or blockchain games. Most of them are quite slow and non comparable to Web2 games. But yeah, there's still a long way to go. I don't know uh, if there's no other like comments or ideas, we can go straight to Q&A. Um, I have received some questions. The first one is uh, for Shin or MXC. Uh, what is your advantage over other projects? Is it from a security point of view or the uh, technology you, you guys are currently using or are there other advantages? What makes you believe that your project is, uh, should be ch- uh, the choice? <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, good. So I think so. there are uh, a lot of Web3 infrastructure projects uh, similar to us right now on the market. So uh, some of them working on the Wi-Fi infrastructure uh, to roll out. Some of them are using uh, narrowband technology like what we do. So I think our advantage is the is the um, is a business model because uh, all the other projects so they are building this kind of thing for to just to bring the telecom business to Web three to blockchain. So we think that this makes no sense, right? So why you're building another telecom business in the DAO way uh, in Web3? So the reason why we build this kind of uh, Web3 wireless radio infrastructure is, like I said, is to bring the real world assets to the blockchain and also to let the metaverse, let Web3 users to make some impact to the real world like this bi-directional communication. And then uh, our network is free and open, right? So uh, on the contrary to the other projects, so they're just replicating the telecom business and then they just want to charge people for the data subscription, just like telecom, uh, but in crypto, right? But uh, we think this totally makes no sense. We are just uh, making the network open and free to use and then when people want to bring like their real world Nike shoes or their real world Absolute Vodka to Kusama, to the blockchain. Yeah, so there are a lot of uh, gas fees to be paid for sure. So that's a, that's a uh, fundamental difference and our advantage uh, uh, between our projects and the, the other ones. Because as you see that if you just want to connect the buy or just want to see the temperature data uh, of your garden, why you would need to use Web3, why you need to, uh, would like to purchase cryptocurrency to pay for this kind of data. No, you don't want, you just, you just want to use Web2 web infrastructures like Verizon or Deutsche Telekom's uh, network, right? So you don't have any motivation to go to Web3. I think the, the motivation for people to go to Web3 in our case, and I think also the, in the other panelists, the case is NFT, and it's the uh, digital ownership, and it's also the entertainment that they could have, and this kind of utilities they can they uh, find 
uh, in this kind of uh, NFTs to, to push them to go to Web3. And uh, also, I would say that uh, the NFT and the metaverse would be the door opener for a lot of our, our projects in the Polkadot and the uh, Kusama ecosystem to see that a lot of people are aware of this kind of thing and then they want to be a part of it and then they would like to purchase uh, crypto and they would like to create a, a, a wallet with this kind of uh, um, recovery phrase to write down them and to go through this kind of uh, um, steps that they are not familiar with of username and password thing, right? So to participate, to, to be a part of it and to, to build it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, uh, the high take rate of uh, Web2 platforms like uh, Verizon or other AT&T that kind of uh, similar service providers is definitely uh, one problem people are still suffering from. And the return of ownership is definitely the chant. Um, the next question from the audience is like, uh, in what kind of a specific part of uh, the gaming industry would be affected uh, by blockchain in the future? I don't know if you guys want to say something about this. It's an open question for everyone. Yep. All right. Um, I'd like to feed more on that because um, Darwinia developed a cross-chain game called Evolution Land. Um, so the, for, for the game fly industry, uh, something really critical is how to keep a healthy economic um, tokenomics for the, for the game. Uh, and Evolution Land was developed in 2018. So we have been trying to keep the economic balance within the game. It's kind of hard because for a lot of game five projects, uh, players are just mine tokens from like say the NFT land and then uh, sell and trading these tokens and then leave the game. And the economic circle will uh, suddenly collapse uh, within like say one or two months. So um, I guess keeping the balance of tokenomics within the game is really critical uh, for game five projects. Also, um, fo following the trend of metaverse and metaverse is all about interoperability. I guess it's something critical for uh, game five or crypto games, uh, blockchain games to showcase interoperability of NFTs. So that's why Darwinia itself is working on uh, developing decentralized NFT bridges. And Evolution Land is also trying to integrate malteaching NFTs into Evolution Land. Like say, uh, puzzles in Evolution Land can adopt CryptoKitty as, and Polka Pets uh, as their pets to um, increase the mining power of these puzzles. And for the future uh, coming, a new PVP gameplays, we're also uh, integrating malteaching NFTs, especially some really popular uh, blue chip NFTs into the PVP system. Uh, for example, uh, previously, uh, you can only use your puzzles to join the PVP compact in the game. And for now, we welcome players holding uh, different NFTs to join the PV PVP uh, system. Like they were definitely welcome uh, Meta Friends uh, players who hold Meta Friends toys to join the PVP uh, game. Also, we're uh, welcoming like Canaria in from the Remark Metaverse to join Evolution Land. Uh, so Canaria holders are also able to join the PVP uh, game placing Evolution Land as well. So uh, that's something uh, next in our roadmap here. Looking forward to the game. Um, the next question is, how, what do you guys think about the uh, NFTs on Ethereum 2.0, for example, uh, Polygon. Do you think it will uh, also repeat the success of NFTs on Ethereum? Um, it's a bit bit weird to, to see <laughs> Polygon as Ethereum 2.0. It's maybe a, a side chain um, mm -hmm. that is anchored to Ethereum. No, it cannot enjoy the same success because um, 
UX of bridging assets over, which you need to do in order to interact with Polygon, is uh, is terrible across the board. It's uh, it's not good anywhere. So uh, if you have to train people how to properly find a good bridge and bridge over their assets and then use them on the other chain and understand what the bridged assets do, um, switch RPC endpoints in, the, in MetaMask to, to actually use the other chain and so on. All of those are, are user experience frictions that most people are not interested in, especially because the liqui- like there's a nasty catch-22 there where there's no liquidity on Polygon, and so there will never be liquidity on Polygon. Um, without liquidity there, there can be no liquidity there. <laughs> um, and so because most of the money is on mainnet Ethereum, that is where most of the NFT trading is, and that is where most of the success is. This is also why advanced NFT standards cannot ever work on Ethereum, because if you're expected to interact with an NFT, um, you know, more than zero times, uh, it will be too expensive. One of the Legos that we have at Remark is on-chain emoting, where you can emote onto on any uh, NFT in the standard and any... Uh, user interface into implementing the standard will show those emotes, those reactions on the NFTs. Um, naturally, this is completely impossible to to do on Ethereum without uh, you know rollups and uh, other layer two scaling methods, which again require bridging your assets and doing uh, a lot of other different things that just are too complicated for the average user. So I don't think Polygon will ever rival Ethereum in um, you know, in NFTs, um, unless it dramatically, you know, out outdoes it in terms of what it's offering, um, and I don't, uh, I don't think it will. So my my opinion is no, no, Ethereum will remain king until, um, you know, until our standards are live on EVMs, and then things will change. Tai Tai, you want to say something? Yeah, um, I'd like to bring a little bit of nuance of what Jasprino said. Um, we, we do know that any, um, it could be Polygon or any other chains, uh, will bring, will go to mainstream if we have enough traction and the ecosystem supporting it. Uh, if you go from the past, Ethereum has been the king, but for this cycle, we have other chains that emerged and have a lot of great traction and building, a lot of uh, developers building the app on those. And one other thing is we, we, we often associate NF- <clears throat> NFT with those pictures, PFP, but there's other asset, where what asset could be backed on the NFT. So to, to, to the question, I think <clears throat> if the ecosystem is great enough, if people are, <clears throat> sorry, if people are willing to try and to experience that NFT on that, any of the, those blockchain, then we can, we can maybe foresee any of those, any other Ethereum or a similar competitor to Ethereum blockchain to go to the mainstream, but the the, the one the one thing to re, to 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 remember is can enough people go on the chain and can they sustain and retain the um, the interest on that chain? Yeah, I agree. Um, thank you uh, both for the uh, sharing, and then uh, the last question from the audience is a quite uh, specific uh, question. I don't know if you guys uh, are uh, NFT collectors or not. Uh, the, uh, the, the question is that the guy or the girl want to buy uh, tiny dinos and moonbirds, especially moonbirds, which is quite uh, popular this week. Uh, do you guys know about those two projects? Um, yeah, it's quite specific and niche. Bruno, I guess you must know about them. <laughs> I, mean, I'm, I mean, I know about them, but it's not just, it's just another PFP. It's nothing. Um, it's just another Fiverr artist hired to generate 10,000 combinations of uh, yet another pixel-based avatar. Um, it's literally, it offers nothing other than more greed. They are trying to raise $75 million. $75 million can buy a country. Um, <laughs> a project that paid $500 to a Fiverr artist to make their 10,000 um, moonbirds 
<laughs> does not need 75 million dollars and they can promise any kind of utility in the future they want they they really literally can because a lot of people do but it just doesn't um, make sense so i would stay away I, I totally agree. But like the founder team has uh, some shiny backgrounds. I think that's why a lot of formers are forming about it. Yeah. But recently, I think this kind of uh, NFT shoes the thing so hit a lot of the people outside. Even. So they don't even know what is NFT. They are asking me, hey, she, how can I rent this kind of shoes to run and to get some token? Yeah, so yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's like evolving. We see a lot of new innovations and the new involvement uh, in this industry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a quick note from two cents from, from my side uh, mm -hmm. to, to this person. If you need to invest in, in any project, uh, measure the impact the, the project has. Any on the, it, it could be on the society or on any other of those applicable uh, companies. And for NFT in particular, um, as Vitaly said, is uh, Ethereum wasn't built to <laughs> allow people to swing trade on PFP, and that's not the main application of it. So, <laughs> with that grain of salt, you can measure the the potential uptrend or the potential gains you can do by swing trading those PFP, but at your own risk. Yeah. Thank you all for the uh, great suggestions. I think the guy of the person must learn of <laughs> learn something new about it. Um, uh, I think that will be all for today's uh, discussion. Uh, just in case, if you guys want to say like some final words about the discussion or the NFT and the metaverse field, feel free, feel free to uh, say something. Uh, if not, I think uh, let's call it a day. And thank you so much for joining us and share the thank insightful you. and enjoyable. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the invite. invite. Thank you. Thanks and uh, please, please join us on singular.app. Try minting some cutting edge NFTs. Tell us what doesn't work. Try breaking our stuff and let's build the future together. Yay. Thank you. Bye. Join our 